Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ice Ice Outpost, where we have got little Arctic wolf pups running around. Oh, listen to that tiny, tiny little howl. One day, this little guy is going to grow up to become big and strong, and possibly end up inheriting a whole new wolf territory. Oh, there's another one of those little howls. And the new territories are actually what we're going to be focusing on today. So we're still preparing for penguins here at Ice Ice Outpost. Oh gosh, we have so many things to fix in so many different directions. But one of the things we really want to try to focus on today is the upcoming penguins and the aquatic pack that will be out very, very soon. I am so ridiculously excited for that. Also, ma'am, are you okay? Whoa. All right, I'm out in the middle of the tundra. Are you okay? Oh, you and your, your boy here need somewhere to throw something away. Why do I have no bins over here? What am I thinking? Do I want these people to litter? All right, let's go ahead and throw down some bins in a convenient location. There we go. And... Yes! Okay, good. They didn't litter. I'm very proud of you too. And in fact, if I had more time today, I would actually love... I'm freezing out here. It's making my teeth chatter. Oh. If I had more time, I would love to try to make Lily Chambers a little happier. But we're actually going to be working on making a new fishing village, which is something I have been looking forward to, like, for so long. We're going to try to make a little pathway to guide our guests through here. Oh, Bracken! Rest in peace, old buddy! And we are going to lead our guests to a brand new sea. So we actually need to expand what is kind of like the polar bear area and a little tiny pond that they have. I mean, come on, this is a pond for a polar bear. This isn't like an ocean. Uh, and we're going to expand the sea quite a bit today. I'm sort of nervous. We have a lot of money, but we're going to kind of put a few breakways between the different waterways and then put down big glaciers made out of ice to try to differentiate where those spots are, like make it so that the ice covers up that they're not connected because cleaning this water is so hard. In fact, okay, this water is doing pretty good. Oh my gosh, is it legitimately just this filter that's like hauling bunny hunkers to clean this entire thing? I think it is. Okay, actually, you know what? If we're really strategic with our filters, I guess we could make just a gigantic sea that connects everything together and is dotted with tons of these little islands that we're going to expand quite a bit. And on these islands, one day, I know it doesn't look like much now, friends, but take some deep breaths in your imagination with me here. One day on these islands, we are actually going to be able to watch little penguins frolic. We can see the penguins frolicking to and fro. We might have a little herd of caribou to represent some of the deer that actually live on many Arctic islands, especially off the coast of Alaska. And they can swim between those islands because deer are actually very good at swimming. And we will have Arctic wolves who will take over one of the islands, have more room for polar bears. I mean, who even knows what else is going to show up over here? We might really just get like a wild idea and make a whole island covered with Himalayan macaques. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? But all right, so first things first, let's go ahead and expand the sea. And then we're going to start thinking about building a Viking fishing village along the coast that will have pathways and bridges that will go across the water to lead everybody to the awesome animals. All right, also, what should we name this ocean? The sea that we're about to build. We need some really cool names for that. All right, let's do this.
torches are lit and the sun is down wow oh you guys that took a lot longer than I thought it would uh, because once again I overestimated how much I could get done and was like oh yeah come on build a whole sea why not Siri let's just build an entire ocean yeah no okay next time we try to take on these projects I really need to remember the most important rule kiss Keep it simple, Siri. Keep it simple, Siri. So yeah, we still have a lot to do. We need to go ahead and add in rocky outcroppings on a whole bunch of these little islands that I've actually made. That was really fun experimenting with how to make the islands and how big to make them, how much of a ratio between the water and the land I wanted to have. I do kind of wish that maybe like we might remove this island and, and maybe merge these two together because you do need to make them big enough that you can have a path swing by it and the animals live on it so that's going to be very important to do we'll definitely play with the size of the islands as time goes on but when we have the opportunity to actually put habitats on here we're actually going to name each of the islands I'm really excited about that like it's not just going to be the island wolf habitat this is going to become like one of our patrons islands that we'll name after them and that's really cool like naming all of the little geographical land locations after them too so ta -da! I am so thankful to the people who make amazing workshop creations because it's thanks to them that we were able to add in so many little Viking things, uh, though some of these things are not little. Like, look at this ship! Oh my gosh, I love this. One day I need to do like a fantastic finds on the workshop uh, video of some kind to share with you guys where I'm discovering some of these amazing things. I think I just typed in Viking and like downloaded everything that looked anything remotely to do with ships and Vikings. 
And this is an amazing new ship that we have actually called the Ship of Seagull, who is one of our admins over on our Patreon Discord. And then I randomized the names from the patron list. So we have Finney's Cargo Hold. I went ahead and named all of the different staff buildings after like different parts of what you would expect to find on a ship, because that's something we love to do to say thank you so much to our patrons. And also because it's just really delightful to kind of take like staff room 70 and give it more of a fun roleplay twist. Uh, oh, did you guys see that they have a little staff room games? Oh, that's so cool. And little stickers. I hope you guys have some good food. This looks a little outdated. I need to like update this for all of you. I can't, but in my heart, I, I wish I could. But that was really fun to come over and like name all of the different buildings that we need for the zoo staff to actually be able to reach after like different parts of a ship. So we have Finney's cargo hold, Viriton's car cartographer room, we have Dr. Kayla's medical quarters, Kalino's lookout, Ara's kitchen quarters, and Chris's ship repairs, which I really love. Poor Chris is going to be very busy repairing this ship. It's probably been down for a while. And then I even came over and I named the the bridge, Treen's Bridge. And right over here we have Stacy's ship. I love that Viking ship. That is just so freaking cool. And then over here, I actually need to name these little ships too. Okay, so this is actually going to be uh, Vess's, let's see, we're gonna call this Vess's uh, Potato Cargo because this is a little fry shop. So we'll say that a long time ago, Somebody named Vess had a bunch of potatoes, like just tons and tons of potatoes in the cargo hold of their ship and it crashed. So now they're trying to turn all those potatoes into French fries, delicious French fries for sale. Get your poutine. And then over here, we're going to have, let's see, we're going to have Vert. Ah, ah, no, I'm pressing all the wrong things to make things start moving. No. All right. This is going to be Vert Campia's uh curry shop so a curry curry cargo there we go there oh that's so fun we need to actually hire somebody in here vert campia's curry cargo this is a mexican mex mexican food restaurant and we're just going to pretend that there's like curry being sold there because that sounds so delicious to just like dig into this big like hot bowl of curry i would love that right about now all right, maybe that's because my husband made like amazing soup for dinner tonight. I was really impressed. It had lentils and like collard greens in it. Collard greens like the size of my head. I had no idea what he was going to do with those things at first. All right, this is going to be Rowan. So this is going to be Curry Champion Rowan. And Rowan is actually going to become a member of the Shipwreck Zone. Welcome, Rowan. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and start getting you trained, my friend. Oh, I love that gigantic little uh, taco. I've never noticed that before. <laughs> but all right, so that takes care of some of the things we've done over here. I think I need to add in... Oh, I'm stuck on one of the... Oh, no. I'm stuck again. Oh, hang on. Phew! I'm free again! Okay, if you guys ever are playing Planet Zoo and all of a sudden your camera starts moving super slow, press the T button! That's what happens when you accidentally tap on the T button. It can really cause some issues. <laughs> Alright, but we also have a couple little cabins that I need to name too. So this is actually going to be uh, Rad's Remote Cabin on an island, no less, Lucky Rad. And this happens to double, again, this is a great thing I found on the workshop, but this doubles as our water purifier and our energy location. And then I had so much fun with this little outhouse. <laughs> I wanted to be able to like make a spot for the toilets, but I wanted it to be like super remote. So I went ahead and made a small island and you guys saw how I did that by taking away the water, raising up the ground and flattening just enough that it could go ahead and fit the little toilet area. And then I removed the land in between them, threw some rocks around it so it looks like it is just built on a craggy little rock outpost. Uh, and then we're actually going to call this, this is gonna be Glarn's Lighthouse or Glarn's, uh, Glarn's, private island. It's going to be a little bit of a joke. I hope you don't mind being in charge of the restaurants, Glarn, but uh, don't worry. Next month you'll have a chance to have something more esteemed than that.
<laughs> but I love this, you guys. I especially love this campfire. Like, this is so cool. And we are definitely going to be trying to take this campfire and put it in more places, maybe without the benches around the zoo so that, or excuse me, cough, cough, around Ice Ice Outpost so that we can put heaters under them and have our guest be quite toasty and happy, perhaps not freezing to, to pieces for once. Let's put some soil under there. Nice. But we still have a ton of work to do, you guys. So I totally bit off way more than I could chew, thinking that I could just retrofit this whole place and make it perfect right out of the starting gate for all of our like penguins and seals and everything else that we want to add over here, like the Arctic wolves. I want to try having islands where maybe we have some unusual animals. We could say escaped from a cargo hold and just decided to settle on that island, like maybe some lemurs or a pygmy hippopotamus um that would be really fun i think that this is going to become a much bigger part of ice ice outpost than i first thought and as time goes on we'll add in glaciers we'll add in ice flows this is going to be really exciting and i could see the sea haha <laughs> do you get it see the sea really expanding a lot to take up like a good half of the room that we've got to work with so this should be a lot of fun we'll have to make sure we can figure out how to make the islands just right. And we'll have to remember, we need to start working on only one island at a time. <laughs> Cause I got a little over eager with everything else. Um, but it is a ton of freaking work to try to like build these up. Also, we have a lot of money. I spent a ton of money. We probably need to be making more money. So we will be spending a little bit of time soon trying to go over and fix some of the problems that our guests have and revamping a lot of the areas that currently are just catastrophes. <laughs> Since this Ice Ice Outpost Zoo has lived through many updates to Planet Zoo, so the way that guests actually have negative impacts has changed, the way that guests like move around has changed, we've got a lot to try to catch up on, and we have some pretty unhappy people. We have a lot of happiness that we need to work on too. Oh wow, they're not very educated and that's always going to make it very hard to get uh, them to open up their wallets. But we'll work on that. We'll get some more Viking houses for the fishing village set up back here so that we can have the exhibits hiding in them, the small exhibits that make people donate that wonderful amount of money that they need to keep this place going. And we'll start adding in penguins. So I like this, you guys. I know today we have mostly just built, so let's take care of the animals who have some low welfare. Oh, the old woodsman's tail. They've actually done a good job of having babies. All right, so we'll take care of the old woodsman's tail animals. And for the role play of it, we like to say that all of the money earned, uh, earned in the old woodsman's zone Wow, $10,000. People have been enjoying the stories that he can tell. Ooh, that's a really nice little oh, fireplace. Okay, we've got to grab that and like put it down a couple more places so I don't forget. Nice. I mean, look, there's plenty of room to add in more of the little houses that are actually like secretly exhibits or not so secretly. Oh, and I really like this little fireplace. Uh, we need to go ahead and underneath it, we need to add a heater. That would be, that would be really precious, actually. Okay, right, let's do that, like, right now. We're going to just sneak this in. And then let's come on in, and we're going to heat this place up a little bit. Just slide that right inside. I need to manage to get to it, is the tricky part. Because I can't control the temperature from here. But I think there's actually, like, a tricky thing... A spot I can grab it at. There's the mechanic research. We should have like everything researched so we don't need to worry about that. The zoo overview. Give me. Okay. All right we'll do this manually. Move it for just a second. And it's trying so hard to increase the temperature. It's like look it's really cold out here. Maybe if we can at least get it like into the 72 range. That's probably the best we can hope for. <laughs> All right, nice. And we'll just get that all set up so that people feel super nice and cozy. I wish we had really small rocks. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the rocks rock. And we absolutely had those rocks pulling their weight 
like all of the puns about rocks and how heavy they are fully intended but we absolutely had those rocks pulling their weight while we were decorating around the islands and making the outline of the craggy coast of the islands there we go cute i like it and the guests seem to be a little happier when they can you know not be freezing to death oh no should we oh rest in peace rest in peace little panda all right, but all right, guys, I'm really excited. I think we actually have covered a lot with building this new fishing like village. Um, I do want to try to save this spot for penguins, and that's so soon. I think it's really important to go ahead and just leave that open. But we're going to keep an eye on the Arctic wolves, and we might try moving some of the Arctic wolves over here. But I think that we absolutely need to find a way to try to attract the guest down this way first. So I think next time what we might actually work on, and you know, can we actually see the wolves a little better from, hmm, I don't think we'll work on trying to get the wolves in, like being able to see the wolves. I think we need a whole new type of animal that we might sneak against this mountainside and start to like pull people down to come look at. So I'm gonna give a little bit of thought about what we could sneak in over here. But I hope you guys like the little speed build. I'm going to try to do more of those and get better at them. I am very unexperienced in that area, but that is why I definitely want to take part in trying to do some more speed builds and mix those in to all of the story that we end up having with really getting to know the animals and the guests and the little villages that we build. I'm really excited to share it all with you. And soon we're going to have little penguins! But all right, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys could, do please leave a like for our wonderful ship of seagull. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.